What's up, amigos? I first heard Penny Panacides' premier album, Protégé. I heard the raw talent. My homie, Matt Gerger, sent me his sophomore album, Cashmere Fashions. I was blown away by the Penny's growth as an artist. His hooks are catchy, rhythmic, and hard. I hope you guys enjoyed my unofficial video mix of his Heater for the Holidays, Off the Chain Now, featuring John Wayne and Chrissy Moe. Pick up the album wherever you can. The album's Cashmere Fashions. Subscribe to him, Facebook, Penny Panacidi, um, his Twitter, Penny916, his Reverb Nation, Penny916. Subscribe to my blog, James7x, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, this is James Anderson Media Presents, number four, Penny Panacidi. Yeah. What's up? This is James 7X, and today on the show I got Penny. <laughs> What's up? This is Penny. You're watching the backstage beat on the YouTube.com. James 7X. Talk about um, Protege. Yeah, Protege. If I mean, if anybody out there has ever heard my album Protege, it's a. Uh, I was young. I was super young, and and it was just it was a transition. Um, it was a transition on, on doing like solo stuff uh, before Protege. Um, I was just doing a lot of collaborations with everyone on Royale, um, but Protege was kind of a, um, I don't know, it was, it was when I when I made the decision to get serious about music and really put together a project, so, uh, but my state of mind back when I was in Protege, I was young and stupid, doing a lot of stupid stuff, and um, just very immature. I guess, but um, at the same time, driven and goal-oriented, and you know, I, just, I wanted to put out a project. Well, talk to me now um, about Cashmere Fashions. It's the the new album. Pick it up, check it out. Um, title track: Cashmere Fashions. Album: Ca Cashmere. I mean, if, if anybody ever heard of Cashmere, uh, Cashmere is a very grown-up, um, I don't know, style of clothing, I guess, and so. Um, I heard the name Cashmere and just it made me think of you know grown-ups you know you got a cashmere sweater y'all flying shit so uh, Cashmere Fashions was a transition of the protege and me just growing up in life me maturing and kind of growing into a man and uh, if you listen to the protege and you listen to Cashmere um, you know it's it, it's just me maturing um, being being a lot more realistic with myself and my fan base um, a lot of uh, you know digging deep about some stuff, some real serious topics instead of a bunch of arrogant, egotistical stuff like put the project. What's been the most memorable show that you played? Most memorable show ever. Uh, I gotta say, for me, it was having the opportunity to open up for Busy Bone um, at uh, the Boardwalk up there in Orangevale. Uh, I was a big fan. You know, I've always loved Busy Bone. I grew up listening to Bone Thugs. And, and uh, you know, to have the opportunity to open up for someone like that, that was huge for me, you know? And uh, just to be on the same stage as him and just be in the back room, to be able to talk with him, it was, it was almost surreal. You know, I, I didn't have, uh, I, I didn't have, I wasn't starstruck or anything like that, but I mean, just from growing up as, you know, nine, ten years old, listening to Bone Thugs and, you know, to be able to sit there and talk with Busy was, was freaking awesome, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Super down to earth guy, too. Cool as hell. One of the songs I really enjoyed uh, on it uh, was Say What You Want to Say with Seven. You talk about uh, your partnership with Seven and how it came to be. I met Seven. Uh, I got a friend out there. His name's KT. Shout out, KT. Seven Deuce. What's up, man? I love you, bro. Um, a good friend of mine. Um, we share we share the same faith in God. I mean, so he's 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 a friend of mine on the street, but he's also a friend of mine in music as well. So um, he's also a fellow artist. And uh, Seven's actually his brother. And so I've done a lot of work with KT Seven Deuce personally, and uh, I'm actually a fan of his brother Seven. And so uh, to be able to work with him personally. Uh, it was a huge opportunity, um, and so I did a song, and I had three verses on the song, and the message that I was portraying in the song um, was on some, you know, it was on some inspirational, positive stuff. It's just kind of a reflection of me and my faith and, and my lifetime experiences and all that kind of stuff. And you know, I talked to I talked to KT, and um, he connected it, and 
got Seven on the song and I got a feature by him. And I was definitely blessed by Seven to be able to do that. So shout out Seven. Thank you very much for uh, for your feature and blessing me on the track. Appreciate it, man. Hope you're doing good. God bless. Um, Royale Family is a family, um, and it's all it's all based behind Blow. Uh, Blow Zar, Blow Zar is my producer, uh, and Blow is his MC name. He's the owner of Royale Records. Uh, Royale Family, though, is is a family. A family MCs. Um, it it uh, consists of Blow, John Wayne, Dewey Twist, um, G Wiz, uh, Mark Majonier, Louis, uh, Tenacious, and uh, they're all they're all pretty much blood related. And um, I got brought into Royale. I met Dooley Twist. Um, not even on some music shit. I mean, me and him were neighbors actually, and uh, and uh, we just kicked it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my next door neighbor, man. Shout out to Dooley Twist. I love you, bro. And um, next door neighbors, you know, and that, that's how we got to know each other. You know, I, I mean, I, I know, I know that he rapped and all that, but uh, I didn't even bring it up. You know, I'd known him for five, six months. You know, and that was some real life stuff with him. You know, we had each other's backs. You know. Streets and all that kind of stuff, and then uh, I came out at him with a track one day. I remember, and uh, and we did a track together. And I guess he felt it or whatever. And then since then, he brought me, he brought me in, and uh, I met Blow. And I, I know John Wayne before that. John Wayne stayed with Dooley for a little bit, so I know John Wayne. But then Dooley brought me to Blow, and then uh, we made a couple songs together over at Edible Sound Studios out in Fair Oaks with D. And uh, and then they all decided to bring me in. So and that's that's. That's how I started like with Royale. What is taking out the garbage? Taking out the garbage, man. All right. What that song consists of, it's, uh, I mean, honestly, my opinion about a lot of the music nowadays is it's fucking garbage. Um, how so? What makes it garbage? What makes it garbage, too? I mean, not everything. There's not everything out there. There's a lot of good music still being made. Uh, but my, my opinion, just the standard of where rap and hip hop started to where it is now. Uh, it's just all based on everyone's egos. Uh, I mean, uh, rolling on 24s, big screen TVs and bitches just gets old. You know, every single song based on the same subject just gets old. You know, all this poppy shit on the radio. I just, I mean, me personally, I'm just not a fan of it. And, uh, and so my opinion is, I mean, people need to get back to the roots of stuff. I listen to a lot of Tupac, um, you know, and, and, and Tupac's message in his music, it was fucking real. It was real as shit. It wasn't about all this, all this, uh, you know, um, materialistic stuff that, that controls the industry nowadays, you know, and so taking out the garbage is just kind of a, you know, just a metaphorical track, just about, you know, um, just, you know. I just don't like all this shit nowadays. I, I keep it real. Nothing good. You know what I mean? So it's, it's whatever. I, I, I'm just into making quality music and, uh, you know, and expressing myself and just being real. You know, and, and if you can't be honest in your music, you probably can't be honest in your life. So, Sacramento and Boise, what the difference is. Um, I don't know. Boise's hungry for something. I mean, every every city wants to be a part of something. Every city wants to have something to call their own. I guess um, Sacramento's had a you know obviously a big rap and hip hop scene for years, starting with you know Bella Lynch and X Rated and Sibo and you know all those cats back in the day. But Boise's never had anybody. You know, and there's there's a, you know there's a cool little market up there in Boise. You know, you got a lot of people that love hip hop and rap. And Boise's thing is. I mean, there's no ghetto or no hood up in Boise, but there's a lot of people that are real, you know, condensed and in, in, into the urban culture. So hip hop and rap is huge up there, you know, and there's a lot of people up there that show a lot of love. You know, the people are actually coming out to shows and stuff. Whereas in Sacramento, man, only people that show up to hip hop shows are other rappers or people a part of other labels that are performing, you know, so it's, it's hard to get heads out to the show, you know, and, and a lot of it, you know, it's all the violence and stuff, you know, who the fuck wants to come out to a club if, if, if you, if you go through the risks of, you know, that bitch getting shut up. How would I describe my sound? Uh, very creative, original, um, I don't know, honest, um, I think that's one thing that I got going for me, I'm white. White rapper, you know, I can't really make it on all the hype and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, any way that I'm gonna develop fan base is just being myself, and um, so I think I, you know, my, my delivery, I got a, a, a unique delivery. I like to change up styles and stuff. I'm still, still growing as an artist. I don't even think I've found my sound yet, to be honest with you. 
thing about it is a uh, it's it's an everyday situation that happens. Um, I mean, anyone that has the album or anyone that's gonna get the album, think or think about it is uh, you know, it, it's a song about a story of of a a kid, a 17 year old kid. He's a gangbanger. Uh, and he gets shot and killed in front of the liquor store. Just found out that his his girlfriend is about to have a a baby, and he got shot and killed um, by his cousin that was dating that girl. And then how she goes down a cycle of um, you know doing drugs. Her baby daddy's dead. Uh, she becomes a heroin addict, um, and her uh, and, and she gets killed. Gets in prostitution. Gets killed. I think gangbangers by you know people in her hood and all that kind of stuff and um, pimps and whatever and then uh, and then and then also goes into the story about her father and the guilt that that he uh, that he uh, consumed of the whole situation and you know and, and so it's it's a story but it's it's a it's a story about every life for everyday life for a lot of people out there man off the chain now is a pretty much a it's a, it's a song um, that consists of. Um, you know, I mean, a lot, a lot of people are scared of change in life, and uh, you know, if you, if you don't change your situation, ain't nothing gonna change in your life. You know, so it's kind of a song, of, you know, just on, a, I don't know, um, getting out of a situation, uh, creating something new for yourself, putting yourself in a pot of a positive atmosphere, uh, positive environment. Um, you know, struggles that we all go through. And, and who got you started rapping? Who got me started? Yeah. Um, as in like a big name artist or like like as in a... Inspiration, the first inspiration. I'm going to go rap. I'm going to be a rapper. Shit. Uh, what, all right, the story of me becoming a rapper and how I even started rapping, uh, I did, you know, I, I did a little time or whatever you want to call it, um, like a year and a half in this little program, correctional facility kind of thing. And uh, I'd always wrote poetry my whole life. I was a poet. You know, shit. I got, I got books and books and books and books are full of poetry. Uh, ever since I was a kid, and my bunkie, uh, his name, uh, his name was Gilly. He was a fucking, he was a rapper from Boston, and so he, he, he taught me how to take my poetry and kind of put it to a beat because all my stuff was super, super. You know, there's no, uh, there's no structure to it. I guess it was real freelance, and so I didn't know how to like put a beat. I didn't know what what a 16 was. I didn't know what a bar was. I didn't know any of that kind of stuff. And and so he worked with me personally because he saw that, you know, I'd tell you know, him. Yeah, he taught me how to do that. And, uh, I don't know. I, I grew up listening to Tupac, man. My first, I, I remember buying, um, what did I buy? The first album I ever bought of Tupac was, uh, I think it was Mac and Bentley. And I was in, I was in sixth grade, I think. And, uh, and obviously Eminem. I mean, I, I, shit, I listened to Eminem. Uh, I remember I, I bought Marshall Mathers LP uh, in sixth grade as well. And that shit did not come out of my freaking, out of my um, CD player. I listened to that thing religiously and my parents hated it, hated it. What's your favorite track? Uh, favorite track's probably Criminal. 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 Last song on album, that shit is dope. Just, uh, just the concept to it and his delivery and just the aggression and emotion that he portrayed in it. It's badass. Love it. Pick up the album wherever you can. Penny, where can they pick up the album? Uh, you can get the album at any Dimple record store in Folsom and Sacramento area. Uh, you can hit up Matt Gerger, Sam Crawford, or Dooley Twist for your hard copies in the streets. And anybody up there in Boise, you can go to the Record Exchange in downtown Boise and you can copy your album.